Welcome back, America, to the ReliefFactor.com West Coast Studio. I'm Hugh Hewitt in California. Pleased to welcome United States Senator Tom Cotton to the program. Good morning, Senator. Good morning, Hugh. Good to be on with you, as always. Thank you. Senator, uh, I want to begin because on the uh, television in my studio, Ben Rhodes is holding forth, and the caption says, U.S. foreign policy in the age of Donald Trump. Now, former Deputy National Security Ben Advisor Ben Rhodes was in the White House when the Syrian genocide occurred, the Libyan fiasco, it descended into chaos, Russia seized Crimea and eastern Ukraine, the Iranian deal was struck and $1.3 billion in cash given to the Iranian Quds Force, North Korea got 65 nuclear weapons, Turkey slipped further and further out of the NATO Uh, Alliance. Israel was put on the back burner and relations dropped to an all time low. Immigration swept across Europe. And of course, Ben Rhodes played the media, as he said, like an echo chamber. Would you pay any attention to this guy? Man, Hugh, just hearing you recount all that brought back the bad old Obama era. And it's hard uh, hard to recall just how bad the foreign policy of the United States was in those eight years and what a bad hand the president was dealt when he started. So no, Hugh. Uh, given that calamitous record, I, I, which I think you know had an exclamation point put on it in the final days of the Obama era, when Russians were mercilessly bombing women and children in Aleppo and Syria, I'm not sure that I would take foreign policy advice from many people who are involved in crafting the Obama era foreign policy. I mean, I think I would go away to a monastery and pray for a while if that was my record. Now I have to turn to one of your colleagues, and I know the Senate rules about not criticizing your colleagues. But yesterday, Senator Richard Blumenthal, who is like you, a lawyer, he may even be a Harvard Law graduate like you. I'm not sure. And uh, you Harvard Law graduates can be pretty smart. I don't know where he went to law school. Senator Blumenthal said this about Brett Kavanaugh. Long quote. I hope you agree with me. We're not going to allow Brett Kavanaugh on the United States Supreme Court without a real fight of our lives. And we're going to make sure America knows what's at stake. And it's not just reproductive rights. It's also protections for health care. Millions of Americans who suffer from pre-existing conditions. And everybody thinks pre-existing condition must be something that affects someone else, right? Well, it's every one of us. Diabetes. Heart disease. Obesity, drug addiction, and yes, pregnancy is a pre-existing condition. Are we going to roll back those protections for Americans with pre-existing conditions? Absolutely not. Now, uh, Brett Kavanaugh is, in effect, a get-out-of-jail free card for Donald Trump. He is a way for Donald Trump to protect himself because... Brett Kavanaugh has said, just coincidentally, he doesn't think the President of the United States ought to be subpoenaed to a grand jury. How convenient. He doesn't think the President is barred from refusing to enforce a law. He thinks the President can refuse to enforce a law, even if the courts, including the United States Supreme Court, have said it's valid and constitutional. The President would, in effect, be a monarch. The president would be a monarch if Brett Kavanaugh becomes a Supreme Court justice. I don't think Americans want an imperial presidency. Do you? So, Senator, let me play just the last clip so you can make sure you heard it correctly. The president would, in effect, be a monarch. The president would be a monarch if Brett Kavanaugh becomes a Supreme Court justice. Tom Cotton, what do you say to something like that? Well, you know, I met with Brett Kavanaugh yesterday, and I don't recognize the person that Senator Blumenthal is describing. Uh, Brett Kavanaugh seemed like both a brilliant jurist and a non-threatening suburban dad to me, not a <laughs> not a monarch. Uh, I, uh, I have said, you know, Senator Blumenthal is is entitled to vote against Brett Kavanaugh. I think he's already said he's going to vote against Brett Kavanaugh, but. Virtually every claim he made there is inaccurate. Uh, I mentioned that Senator Blumenthal condemned Barack Obama when Barack Obama declined to enforce, say, the Defense of Marriage Act. And, uh, you know, Brett Kavanaugh on the Court of Appeals in Washington, D.C., has repeatedly shown himself 
willing to strike down executive actions um, of both administrations, which is pretty far from being a monarch. And as far as all of his claims about health care, I mean, Brett Kavanaugh is not going to be the Secretary of Health and Human Services. He's going to be su- uh, Supreme Court Justice. It's up to the Congress and to our state legislature to decide health care policy for this country. Um, I support you know, giving coverage to people with pre-existing conditions. I suspect Richard Blumenthal does as well. That's not really the province, though, of the Supreme Court. I, I'm just amazed that a United States senator goes on and says the president would, in effect, be a monarch. The president would be a monarch if Brett Kavanaugh becomes a Supreme Court justice. You know, people hear that and they actually believe this stuff. And it it makes me wonder about the basic obligation to be truthful of elected officials. And this is not truthful. Well, I, I think Senator Blumenthal is using a little hyperbole there. He knows he's not, Donald Trump and any other president is not going to be a monarch. They're subject to the people's judgment. Uh, in four years, and they're subject to term limits if they win the re-election. Um, and as I said, Judge Kavanaugh has shown himself more than willing to stop unlawful executive action. Uh, he did that on the Court of Appeals in Washington, and I'll sure he'll do it again on the Supreme Court if he finds it. Now, I-, I talked yesterday with Chairman Grassley, who does not anticipate Kavanaugh hearings in August. He anticipates them in September. So you have this August period where you're going to be there working. Will you be trying to get your friend Mike Pompeo, some assistant secretaries? Will you try and get the Navy a general counsel? Will you try and fill up the executive branch? Yeah, so, so Hugh, first off, I think Chairman Grassley is right. We're looking at early September hearings. You know, the Democrats have requested uh, you know, millions and millions of documents, many of which Brett Kavanaugh did not originate, write, or substantively review. Uh, we're still going to produce more documents than anyone's ever received. Of course, now the Democrats are complaining they don't have enough staff and enough time to review those documents. So it's clear they're just playing stall ball, trying try to run out the clock on Judge Kavanaugh. And we're not going to let them do that. But we are going to have a thorough searching review of his record for the American people to see and for all undecided senators to review as well. In the meantime, we're going to spend the month of August on a couple issues. One, passing some legislation the House passed before they took their five-week recess last week. So this week we passed the defense bill, for instance. Um, We're also going to work on some more spending bills uh, later this month for the Department of Defense. Uh, But second, as you say, we're going to confirm more members to uh, the subcabinet, as well as some of the more some judges to the courts of appeals and some trial judges as well, as we just did six yesterday. So those are our two priorities for the month of August. I think it'll be a productive time for us. Uh, Is the general counsel of the Navy on your short list? Because I do think if we're going to get to 500, 355 ships, we got to get the Navy staffed. Uh, I don't think, Hugh, I don't think Senator McConnell has announced the uh, list of nominations we'll be considering when we get back after our coming weeks. Uh, but obviously, the general counsel of all the services is a high priority. And as soon as that nomination is ready, I suspect Senator McConnell will want to move it across the floor. Let's talk a little bit about Pastor Brunson, if we could. Your colleague and friend Mike Pompeo has been in the news a lot, as has the president, has has a number of people demanding that President Erdogan immediately release Pastor Brunson. What's your position on this, and is there anything that the average American can do to advance the freedom of this American being held by a NATO ally? First off, I just encourage all Americans to pray for Pastor Brunson being held unlawfully in Turkey. Uh, President Erdogan had committed to release him, and he did put him out of jail, but he's still in home confinement, um, which is a little bit better, but it's not what it should be, which is him home with his loved ones and his friends. Uh, The defense bill that we just passed in the Senate yesterday that the president will sign soon contains a 90-day pause on F-35 procurement for Turkey uh, for the secretary to review and see what kind of threat that poses. I I think we should consider using that uh, as leverage to uh, get Pastor Brunson back as well. That means 90 days, uh, uh, a 90-day pause, but it could be longer than that as well. And if necessary, either the president Uh, or the Congress should consider it if Pastor Brunson is not soon released. Now, Senator, I've asked a couple of people, and and it's been ambiguous. I believe you authorized the construction simultaneously of two United States uh, aircraft carriers. Am I correct about that? Yeah, that's right, Hugh. Will they both be uh, built within four to five years? Will they both be doing their sea trials within four to five years? We hope so. These are the new Ford-class carriers. The Ford itself, Hugh, as you know, has had some troubles. Um, Sometimes that's the case when you have a new weapon system, especially one as large as an aircraft carrier. 
but we hope that those have been ironed out and uh, the construction timeline on these next two will move much faster. All right. If that's the case, will they be full F-35 ships? Because there was a published report in the National Interest last night that China has developed an airborne anti-ship missile, which could threaten all of our carriers. And I'm beginning to wonder, you know, what is, what is your assessment of their defensive capabilities as well as their offensive striking power? Hugh, I don't know if the decision on their air wing is made or even could be made this uh, this far out. I will say that uh, our Navy has taken uh, real st- strides to harden the defenses of our carrier battle groups. Uh, some of those things are classified, obviously. Um, but the, th- the threat is real to those carriers. The Navy recognizes the threat is real. And working with the Congress and especially the Armed Services Committee, we've been taking steps to try to counteract those threats from China. All right. My last question goes to you as chairman of the, as a member of the Intelligence Committee. Facebook took down 30 plus accounts yesterday that appeared to have been linked to the Russian efforts to meddle with our election. Do you believe we're on top of Russia's attempt to screw around with this again? Better than we were two years ago, Hugh, but we always have to be vigilant. Uh, this is not a one time action by Russia. Russia has been manipulating Western opinion um, for decades. It's just what they do. Uh, so we have to remain vigilant. And it's good to see a company like Facebook taking that step. There's probably more steps that can be taken, but it is very important that we monitor it very carefully. It's very important that our state election authorities recognize the threat that they face, that their cyber defenses are ready, and that they have a audible paper, paper trail for elections um, so we can be sure that we have integrity in our uh, ballot box. And is the effort on the Intel Committee bipartisan? I saw Senator Tillis. I saw Senator Warner. You often speak to it. It does seem to me like the Senate Intelligence Committee is actually acting in a bipartisan fashion vis-a-vis foreign interference with our elections. On that question, yes, Hugh. Um, now, of course, we have our differences. You know, Ron Wyden, for instance, you know, sometimes find himself in a minority of one on a 14 to one vote on questions about um, surveillance um, or espionage overseas. Uh, sometimes we will have a party line vote behind closed doors, but it's pretty rare. Um, and even when we do, it's just honest, genuine differences of opinion about the right policy. Overall, though, the Senate Intelligence Committee, like the Armed Services Committee, is one of the more bipartisan committees in the Congress. Well, I appreciate your spending time with us. Please go back and do your best to stop a monarchy from taking root in the United States. Tell uh, Senator Blumenthal we're with him against them. We don't want a monarchy. <laughs> <laughs> Something we can all agree on. Here. Okay. Thank you, Tom Cotton. <laughs> Richard Blumenthal, a monarchy. Honest to God, he ought to be laughed out of town. Stay tuned. I'm coming back with United States Senator Jim Talent. Don't go anywhere, America. It's the Hugh Hewitt Show. 